Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa and I'm super stoked. Today we got the one, the only Ryan Medora in the house, ryanmedora.com, which I hear is strictly you. It is, yeah. Um, it's me. There aren't other Ryan Medoras out there. Apparently I am a unicorn and that's awesome. I love it. Fate. I have I have the domain and all of my information is on there. Destiny. Destiny. Yes. <laughs> so Ryan, uh, you probably, if you have any of my courses, have heard her before. She does all the bass on the jam tracks, the Hendrix course, all the stuff from this point forward as well. You'll be hearing her play. And we also have a course of our own coming out where Ryan shows us guitar players how to play bass, which is awesome. I can Sweet. dust off that thing in the corner I got over there. It's like, Phew. You're like, why, why are there fewer strings on this <laughs> exactly. instrument? It's kind of familiar, but isn't. So Bigger. Yeah. Better. Bigger lower. and better. Mm -hmm. Hey, All yes. about the bass. No trouble. No trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, where does one begin? I mean, we're going to do a few videos with you, obviously, so you can get us some fundamentals and the course really nails in you know everything from arpeggios you need to learn to fingering to this hand to this hand the whole nine yards but say you got a bass in the corner and you're like today i'm gonna play and they haven't seen the course yet yes what's some 101 on a track like this 101 is you want to play to the song so okay. if you can figure out what the changes are just like hang out and play root notes and get a groove on okay you know so i think the first thing to do is say okay like you're picking up a bass, you might be familiar with the guitar chords. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, the chords are easy. We're, we're going to G and then we go to F and we go to C. The trick is to find those notes on a bass okay. and then to get m comfortable moving between them or even just locking in with some root notes. Okay. You could play a really simple pattern that just complements the, the chords that you're playing on guitar. Okay, cool. So I'll leave this track down below and I'll put it without the bass. And then I'll show you a track with the bass so you can hear what she's doing, but also it'll give you an opportunity to play along with it without hearing bass. So you can create your own thing, which is what we're all about here. Absolutely. So as a uh, bass player, what are you listening for? I mean, obviously the drums, but like something in particular or? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things, um, at least from the drummer, I'm really listening for where the pocket lies in terms of where the kick drum is. Okay. Because typically in a lot of rock music in particular, you know, it's it's cool to create a rhythmic foundation with the kick drum. Mm -hmm. So you might hear the kick drum go like boom, 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 or something like that, yeah. where typically the emphasis on a kick drum in something like this rock tune is going to be beat one. Mm -hmm. Beat one is the most important. Yep. And then maybe beat three or something around there so okay. one two three and four and so that kind of like oh yeah, yeah is at the end of the yep. bar so but that kind of like gives you your rhythmic structure that you want to kind of mm -hmm. play with with yeah. the drummer so first and foremost beat one you want to be there with the kick okay. drum and then you want to kind of listen to the other things and then next you also want to listen for hits that are happening so like okay. listen for when you you can even kind of imagine it in your mind where you were to see a, a drummer go for like a crash cymbal sure. and you want to try to lock in with those hits okay because that kind of just like gives the uh, the rest of the band a united rhythmic front okay which is and a pretty cool thing to do you were talking about just doing root notes mm -hmm. um what about note duration on a track like this that's crucial you know okay. so something like this because it's really big the guitars are like just like these big old rock and roll guitars mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to have longer notes to smooth everything out so yeah. like typically with a lot of like funk and like just tighter music you might have a groove where you like choke the note and yeah. you play like really short like yeah right you know that's like a really short note but if you kind of like play it longer it kind of matches how like when you strum a guitar chord you know you strum a guitar chord and it breathes it has room to breathe okay you can do that with the bass as well where you like you know just yeah, playing yeah, yeah. something as simple as that where you're not cutting off the note okay but you are defining it and you're taking up space when that within the bar okay so the the chords in this particular track i mean it's just really easy. it's like a g and then a c chord right and then an f and then a c so if i'm playing like if you're doing that i can go and do something like this Okay, 
Okay, so it's real, real basic. Real basic. So, and and all of a sudden, we're being very musical about yeah. it. Like, I think the, the the trick to playing bass is not playing too many notes. Where sometimes okay. you want to you want to make sure you're you're saying something and you're contributing to the music. Yeah. But sometimes just staying out of the way and just finding the right moment to say something yeah. is the right move. So if you're just getting started, you can just play something musical on the bass just by playing the root notes to the chords. Yes. And you can add a little bit of a change there too by playing around with the octave. Mm-hmm. So for instance, like, oh, we're hanging on that G chord for a little bit. I can right. create a sense of motion by going from this low G here on the third fret to the octave of it here on the oh, yeah, fifth yeah. fret. Okay. So just by doing something like that, So it's almost like I've created the illusion that I've changed sure. just by like jumping up to the octave. Yeah, and it's cool that some of those little uh, embellishments like that open D is in a G chord anyway. So exactly. And movement. and so it's really cool too. Like playing in G is, is a great key to play yeah. in, whether you're playing guitar or bass. Um, and it's cool because one of the things that you want to do when you're playing bass is add a little bit of rhythmic flourish, which you can do with kind of like dead notes or hammer-ons okay. um, where you're kind of adding a little bit of a percussive element to mm-hmm. what you're doing. So instead of playing like, you could add a little dead note or you could kind of play the open string yeah. and then press down on the fretted note. Okay, let, let me let me play the rhythm and then... Um... Show. Cool. Ready? Mm-hmm. Two, three. Nice. Okay, so what if they wanted to move around the melody a little bit? Like, how do you start? opening it up a little bit. So a great thing to do is integrate passing notes. Okay. And so some people will call this, if you ever talk about like this concept of voice leading, Ooh, voice leading, I know, very fancy you term. You must be a musician. <laughs> voice leading is basically when you say, hey, like I know that we're moving from this chord to this chord. Okay. I can use notes in the scale. I can create a little bit of a fill and I can kind of lead everybody through the chord progression. So you're, you're like a uh, behind the scenes leader. Yes. I like to think of it actually as like the GPS where, Ooh, where check, yeah. yeah, because like when you think about like when you're driving in your car and like you don't know where you're going yeah. and your GPS is telling you like, oh, in, in 300 feet, yeah. turn left. You're like, oh, great. Uh-huh. I can put my turn signal on. I can get into the yep. left lane and I know to do that. Okay. So, so what we can do as bass players is we can essentially like tell everybody like, Psst, in 300 feet, turn left, <laughs> go to the C chord. Right, right, exactly. You know? so, so we can kind of pick notes, um, particularly like notes in the scale to help okay. move us from one chord to the next. Yeah. So in this example, one thing that I'm doing is I'm kind of moving between this lower G, the lower G and the higher G. And sometimes I'm playing, you know, just like a nice little D. Sometimes I'll play the, the E. And these are all... In a kind G of major scale. In a G major scale, yeah. even a G major pentatonic scale. Okay. So these are all great note choices. Yeah. And then when we go to the F chord, Ooh, you can nice. kind of do this. Break that down movement. slow. Yeah. So we're going from our F chord with the root note of the chord we're on. And then I'm playing E, D to land on the C. Mm-hmm. And then I'm playing B, A, land on the G. So one thing I'm noticing as a bass player, you're way more up on the frets than guitar players are. I suppose so, yeah. You know, well, like closer to the actual fret wire itself. Real close, yeah. Okay. So you want to play like right just behind the fret. If you're kind of like, in, that's oh, like not a good sound. You get like the buzz. Don't get the buzz. Oof. That's not good. Bad buzz. Bad buzz. <laughs> Avoid the buzz. At Woo! All costs. Right. Yeah. Um, so like if you can even hear if I, if I kind of am in the middle of the fret. Yeah, okay. You know, as that's soon as I get really close, not right on top of the fret, yeah. but just behind the fret, that's where you're going to get the best tone. Okay. And and one thing that I've noticed just from like teaching a lot of people who move from guitar to bass mm-hmm. is that people who play guitar are used to playing a chord and like holding all the notes down at once. Yeah. So when you're playing a G chord, you you know, your hand yeah, is in this sure. position and you're like, all my fingers are on the strings, yeah. on the frets at the same time. With bass, um, if, if you tried to kind of keep your hand 
like anchored, yeah, it's going to be more difficult to move around. So okay. it's okay to like when you play one note, like you want your fingers to be close to the fretboard, but you can lift up. You don't have to feel like you have this like yeah. claw of. <sighs> Thank God. Yeah, like if you try to do this, like a lot of a lot of times, especially from coming from guitar players, just because sure. you have this instinct to like mm-hmm. hold everything down at once to get the chord to speak. Yeah, there's I think there's a greater tendency to want to do that, and then yeah. you get the like the the claw, which yeah. we don't want. Um, so yeah, you can feel free to like have a little bit of movement where you see, like, I am pressing down and my fingers are close to the fretboard, but I'm not like staying. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I imagine with the, um, the hits of the drums, it gives you a little bit of time to jump anyways. Absolutely. Right? Cause you don't always have to be like, yeah, like you're saying, holding everything, holding down the fort, holding down the fort. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you can use a major scale or pentatonic scale to create mm-hmm. a little bit of movement. Now, the chord progression is essentially the exact same thing, more like F dominant in the chorus. Mm-hmm. So from what you played there versus what you would play in a chorus, how do you like open it up to make it a little more exciting or what's the... Well, actually, um, I'm going to make it less exciting. Okay. Yeah, because there's more stuff happening from guitars and other okay. things. So sometimes what I like to do is just you know, kind of stay out of the way where during Mm -hmm. the verse, I'll give it more of a groove. So, you know, I'm playing kind of going up the octave or maybe I'll add a little bit of like a major pentatonic thing. Yeah. So there is movement happening because the guitars are a little bit more simple. Yeah. When it goes to the chorus, everything dynamically goes up a little bit. And so it actually is better if I play kind of like yeah. more to the root notes. Okay. So you're more support at that point. Yeah. Especially because like, if you think about it, like, oh, especially when you're playing like. Yeah. It lets you do everything that you need to do with guitar world. Yeah. And so kind of like allowing that space to exist is great because you're not really cluttering anything up. Yeah. And it, it's not like you're not doing your job. You're absolutely doing your job. You're actually right. just staying out of the way, letting other people in the band uh, speak when they need to. So you're like the picture with the, the black lines drawn and then mm-hmm. the other people just color everything in. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Support. Which I, which I would imagine as a guitar player, learning bass would actually be really good because it will teach you way more about space Mm -hmm. and like how to be more locked in with the drummer and just kind of doing what the song needs rather than all the time yeah i mean it's it's super fun i mean i'm someone who loves to go yeah but yeah i think that it does um give you a sense of refinement yeah in a way where you have to really kind of think about the part that you're playing and how it interacts with everything else sure i think that um more than anything else it helps you improve as a listener Mm -hmm. which is like you know we don't we don't eat music. We listen to music. Yeah. You think about like the verb we're using. It's like, yeah, we listen to music. Like we want to become great listeners. Yep. And so with playing bass, it's like, oh, it gives you something to listen to. It provides another musical perspective. And you kind of say like, oh, the bass does this so that other people can do this. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where like there's this old saying, which is like, oh, like um, if the bass player is doing their job, you don't notice they're there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're there. I mean, Ryan. well, thank you, but <laughs> but I think that like that saying is just something yeah, meaning totally. that like when the bass player is really doing their yeah. job, they're not like drawing attention in an awkward way. It yeah. just becomes this like seamless thing that makes the music sound and feel better. Yeah, I've heard um, uh, the, a lot of the session guys talk about when they do uh, R and B style tracks too. It's mm-hmm. like the same thing with guitar. Like you want the the whole thing's about the rhythm, mm-hmm. so you want to be so pocketed in there that you don't like jump out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and everything is, it's all like puzzle pieces. So everybody yeah. kind of has their unique piece of the puzzle that you put together to like make a band. Yeah. And that's what's so cool about it. All right. So I'm going to do two rounds of the uh, verse. Okay. And then let's do a chorus and you can show them. Sounds great. What we're talking about, right?
I like that. Yeah, okay, so I see, I see what you're saying about the chorus part. Yeah, so like during the verses, I, I am being a little bit more, um, I don't want to use the term aggressive per se, but yeah. I'm just like, you know, GPS, I'm telling you where to go a little bit more okay. with the notes that I'm using. And then in the chorus, I'm staying out of the way and kind of really just rhythmically trying to lock in with what the drummer's doing or even with, with what you're doing on rhythm guitar. Okay. And then leaving things open so that, you know how there's that little like guitar riff that you play over mm -hmm. the G chord? Yeah. It's like, I don't want to get in the way of that. Sure. So I'm letting that kind of be open and, and I'm sticking to the root notes so that you can do it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to try to also like emphasize when you are. Yeah. So, you know, for instance, when you do like an upstroke, when you're going bum, bum, ch, ba, do, ba, yeah. do, da, like with those upstrokes, yep. I'm going to try to match that rhythmically to create a pocket. Okay. So um, towards the different ends of the sections of the song, when a drummer might do a fill, mm -hmm. what what's the bass player's role when a drummer does a fill? I mean, are you trying to get any of that or you just kind of leave open space for him to it depends um okay. sometimes you can do something together but yeah. other times you kind of let them fill and then if you're able to emphasize and land on the last note that they play okay that's like the mark of a really good rhythm section where you might hear the drummer go like boom goon ga boo ba 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 mm -hmm. and that that last note is like something where they play the crash cymbal mm -hmm. and they're playing the kick drum at the same time and if you the bass player can emphasize that hit to kind of like mark the end of that fill and that big crash moment, then um, you're, getting it's gonna, hired. you're getting hired. Hansen's it's going to sound calling. like you know what you're doing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we were talking about, man, you're Robin Ford's bass player. That's amazing. And then she just, she's just like, but I've played a song with Hanson and usually your face is a completely different world. It was like me, like, yeah, I sat in with Van Halen. <laughs> you know what? When you, when you grew up, like, in the mid nineties coming home from school and like, it's like three 30, yeah. you put your backpack down, you put like VH1 or MTV yeah. on and like Mbop is playing. Were. You're just like, my life is amazing. And right they now. talented little buggers. And they still are. They're older now. They're they, like, they still play. They still play. Yeah. What? Oh, that's right. Cause you yeah, played. I played with them a couple of years ago at the Ryman. It was amazing. At the Ryman. Yes. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. So it was dream come true. Like dream come true. Wow. Bucket list <laughs> moment for you. <laughs> That's amazing. Of all the things. Um, well, no, you know, I think one of the, the coolest things about music is like sometimes you just never know where the adventure is going oh, to take sure. you. And, yeah. and something very exciting yeah. might happen. And we all have these things that we're like, oh, man, like that what's exciting it. to me yeah. is maybe not exciting to you. But That's exciting. You, you have that. In, I'd be excited to play with Hanson. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've been very lucky to get to, you know, check yeah. off some cool bucket list Good for you okay so like i said we are going to have a a uh bass players course coming out for guitar players so if you're a guitar player wanting to learn bass it's perfect for that but it's also just a great bass course in general like if you just happen to fall upon this video and you're like i play bass i don't play guitar well it's going to be good for that anyways because it's all about Basically different styles of music and fundamentals of bass playing for those particular styles. Right? Yeah. And we go over like everything from like basic technique, like what, what to do with, with both of your hands, yeah. um, a couple gear things. So yep. if you have questions about like, oh, well, what kind of instrument should I get? What's the difference between different yep. kinds of basses? Um, we answer some of those questions as well. And then kind of get you started with some like basic grooves in terms of like blues, rock, funk. Yeah. All the good stuff. So... Bass player in this style of music, mm -hmm. if, if this is what people like, what, who's a good bass player? Ooh. Like name a couple, like solid three, four chord rock bass players. I mean, one of my favorites is going to be Tom Hamilton from okay. Aerosmith. Yeah. Just like, oh. yeah, I remember uh, listening to like, well, like Sweet Emotion is this yep. one bass line that like yeah. comes to play. And, and he steps out and plays some really cool yep. stuff there. But like even a lot of the stuff from like Jaded, like yeah. whatever song, like the, just the tone on those records yep. is phenomenal. So um, everything on those records, everything is, on, is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, um, Dream On. Oh, so I good. Um, so Tom Hamilton is a really great one. Um, I mean, John Paul Jones, if you want to get a little <laughs> more like if you want to get a little more interesting and, yeah. and complex, like he there are a lot of times when he's really pushing forward, yeah. you know, but like, first off, you're playing with like John Bonham. So yeah. like playing with a drummer of that caliber yeah. means that like the bass player is going to play some cool stuff, but also learn how to stay out of the way to play yeah. what's appropriate. So tone um, too. Yeah. Oh Just my gosh. Massive. So yeah, he's somebody that I would absolutely be into. Um, one of my favorite uh, bass players is Robert DeLeo from Stone Temple Pilots. Oh God. 
Another good one. Another, you know, like, so, so if you want to get in the rock vein, that's just like a really great world to live in. Um, yeah. I think. You know who I was listening yeah. to? My kids are super into uh, Duran Duran. Oh, wow. That freaking bass player. Yeah. That's like, you don't realize it, but like, he is the driving force of every single song that they do. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's all bass. It's, it's all it, bass. Everything else just supports him. <laughs> but the bass playing is really good. Like, it was like, wow, that's like some really interesting bass playing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So, okay. So check out those down below. I'll leave Ryan's, uh, ryanmador.com. Also check out her YouTube channel. Are you on all other socials and yeah. et cetera? I'm like easy to find. Ryan Medora. Anything. Anything. You are the only Ryan Medora. I'm the only Ryan Medora. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I'm not on TikTok because I'm just not yeah. cool enough for that yet. <laughs> But maybe one day. Um, but all the, all the other things, yeah. All right. That's hilarious. All right. Thank you so, so much for checking in. We'll catch you next time.